What's good YouTube, it's your boy the 4th Ken, aka 4, and today I got another haircut tutorial for you guys. So today we're going to be doing a high taper, but the importance of this high taper is the fact that you want to compress it. I'm going to be going in depth today. Um, this is a tutorial, so I'm going to be breaking it down for you guys. Um, I'm just going to be showing you guys one side, but this is, a this is going to be a really good video. So I hope you guys enjoy it and pay close attention. So right now we're just gonna start off by clipping his ends. Um, he doesn't want a lot off, he just wants the top trim. We usually trim it every time he comes, so he gets a haircut like every month. So just trim the, the, the ends. He likes to see his hairline after the haircut. Um, he doesn't like when it hangs over it too much, so we're snipping that a little bit. Uh, nothing too crazy. Um, so right here we're creating the base. This is the structure. Um, so obviously he has an undercut. Um, it's formulated for a high taper though. As you can see, the hair comes out around his ear. It's not like an undercut high fade. It's like a, uh, you know, it's fit for a taper. Low taper, high taper, mid taper, whichever one you wanna do. So today we're gonna be doing a high taper. So the base that we took all around his head was a three. Um, so you wanna create a base so that it levels everything out and it creates structure. Right now we're creating our first guideline and we're not taking it up too high. That's the problem. I see a lot of haircuts. I'm even at fault for this. My old haircuts, it's high tapers that look like mohawks. It's unnecessary, it looks bad. And I, I'm embarrassed when I look at my old pictures and I see that. So this video is just gonna be showing you guys how I do my high tapers. So notice how small that guideline is with the lever open. It's very, very, very small. Um, because naturally the taper is gonna be pushed up as we're blending it. So why, why start pushing it up unnecessarily at first with the guidelines? You wanna set a limit to how far you wanna go up. So right after that lever open, we're playing with our lever. I had it halfway and now I'm opening and closing it to get that line out. And the line, if you set your line in with your trimmers, you're gonna have to get it out with the trimmers. Um, unless you have an extremely zero gap clipper or like a surgical blade or something. Um, so we're going back with our liners, taking that faint bottom line out. Next, you're gonna wanna grab your one guard. Um, I like the wall one guard, basically because it gives me room to work with. Um, it does cut lower than the Andis one guard, but for his texture of hair, I like using the Babilis and the, uh, the wall guards. So notice, just like how I did the lever open, I'm following that same shape with the one. But notice how I'm leaving more hair towards his vertical bars. Because although we're gonna enhance his line, you don't wanna depend on enhancements. You really don't, that's not a good skill. Um, enhancing is definitely a skill because enhancing in moderation is a, a great skill to learn, but just throwing paint on a hairline, that's, that's really not skill. So right now we have our two guard. And right now the lever is open and we're going right under that undercut separation line. And right now we have our uh, lever closed. This will not remove the guy line. This is basically debulking it, um, getting it ready for the one and a half guard, which is my favorite guard, one of my favorite guards. Right here, we have our one and a half guard. And this is where you're really gonna start seeing the blend come together. Um, this guard is just perfect. It's, it, it blends the level in between the one and the two. Um, so right now our lever is open and we're just gonna open and close our lever. Right now it's closed. You're gonna have to do a lot of lever play with blending a high taper. I made a post on my IG a couple weeks back, and this is my opinion. I think tapers are harder than fades. Here's my reasoning. Fades are easy. You're spreading it out. A low fade, yes, that's hard. That can be difficult like a taper. But a high fade, that's easy. You're literally stretching your guidelines. You have a lot of room to work with. If you mess up, you can easily just push it higher. With the taper, you can't do that. If you mess up, you just have to blend under that and hope it masks it. Really think about that. Right now we have our zero guard, our half guard. 
This is our wall half guard. And my lever is open, slightly closing it. Um, using our corners, notice how I use my corners when I get towards the ear. That's the area you really wanna be careful with. That's the area that if you take it up too high, you now have a burst fade. You now have a mohawk, which you don't want with a high taper. You wanna compress the guy lines as low as possible to give that high taper effect because it's just how it says. It's a high taper, it's not a mohawk. It's just a high taper. A taper is a, a tiny fade on the side. So right now we're just doing detail work and as you can see, it's blended. It's blended perfectly. It's not a single line in there. Um, just follow the steps, the system and it should work for you. Um, it will vary by the texture. Um, I recommend going with a base when you have an undercut. It just makes things simpler. Now, if you're dealing with waves or like a low length on top, then that's gonna complicate it a little bit more. But on the other sides, in the back, we're gonna be doing the same steps and I'm gonna let you guys watch it. So with the shape up on the back neck taper, you do wanna take the hair down with the grain. I didn't show it, but I kinda, you know, feathered it with the grain with the one, just to lay those hairs around, around his ear. Um, and then with the shape up, it's pretty simple. Just make a simple, you know, rounded arch around his ear. Don't push it up too high, um, cause that, that, that would be bad. Um, I've done it before. I know other barbers have, that have done it. You push someone's ear hairline back, it, it, it can ruin a haircut. It can honestly ruin it. But as you can see, it's really sharp. Um, now this is something I want to focus on. I don't I'm not sure if you guys can notice, but he has a cowlick on his front hairline. Uh I usually take it down with a four and shape it up, but he has been telling me to take it lower. Um, so right now this is a four. If I were to just shape it up without doing this, it would be crispy, but as soon as he went home, it would not be crispy anymore. Um, this is a three. What you really wanna do is take it down so that when they go home, when they shower, when they play outside, when they go to work, whatever, the hairline's still somewhat crispy. A haircut isn't supposed to last a whole month, but it's supposed to last, you know, a couple of days. Your hairline's supposed to be somewhat preserved. So, we wiped his hairline down with some alcohol and we sprayed hairspray. And now we're combing it while blow drying it. Um, and then we're gonna get started on our shape up. Every haircut's a pushback. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Every haircut's a pushback. Um, it's just a matter of how good you make the pushback look. You can't do a bad pushback. A bad pushback is taking the hairline unnecessarily back. Every haircut, you do have to take the hairline back or else we'd be shaping up baby hairs and you wouldn't even be able to notice the, the hairline. Um, so I'm keeping it somewhat natural. 
but also making it sharp. Um, just notice how I position my client's head when I'm shaping them up. Um, you know, every so often I put my hand on his forehead just to, you know, measure with my eyes, just to make sure that the, everything is leveled. You wanna make sure the vertical bars are matching, the corners are matching. If they, the corners are going up a little bit, you wanna make sure the other corner goes up. You wanna make sure the line is straight. Different people, different clients have different head shapes. So there's instances where I shape someone up and to me it looks straight, but then you turn, you turn them to the side and it looks crooked. As long as it's straight from the front, that's what matters. Right now we're spraying some enhancements. I'm actually about to upgrade to a cordless compressor. So I will be showing you guys that when I get that all set up. A, a good friend of mine put me onto a, uh, a very nice cordless compressor. It's actually a makeup, a makeup compressor, <laughs> believe it or not. Shout out Easy Blade Shaving Products. Head to their website and use my promo code, the fourth Ken, for 10% off your order. Notice how I'm stretching the skin. I personally don't like using shave gel. It's just a style in my city to dry shave it. So I usually dry shave it on everyone. Um, in rare cases, I do use shaving gel, like when I'm shaving someone's face or something. Uh, but other than that, I just dry shave it as I'm doing right here. Just notice how I'm letting the razor glide on the skin, but also stretching it. That's important when you're dry shaving because you will cut the client's skin if you're not stretching the skin. And here we're just doing some last minute detail work because with the compressed eye taper, you will detail it. Notice how I'm using my corners. That's the takeaway from here. Use your corners, detail it. As you can see the line, crispy, symmetrical. And this is the cut. I barely enhanced it as you guys saw. I literally sprayed maybe like five or six sprays of enhancements. I barely sprayed it. Um, this is just a naturally good cut. Like this is an undebatable good haircut. Um, yeah, let me know how you guys enjoyed it. Check out my other videos here. It's the fourth Ken and I'm out. Peace.